Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a joy to be in the presence of, uh, of each of you and also for those who might be uh, viewing and not necessarily here in person. Uh, we welcome everyone in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It brings back memories. Uh, as my wife and I, this is the second Sunday that uh, we are uh, sharing worship with you. And I know that you, you look at me and think, oh, this guy can't be retired. I, I'm on my beginning my fifth year. I have, reti I have retired from full-time uh, ministry, pastoral appointment, I should say. I never will be retired from ministry, pastoral ministry. Um, but we traveled Warren Spring Road a lot uh, as we, we, we would, we would at Turkey Foot, we would then head towards Marion. So this is a bit of new territory as we travel from Turkey Foot to here, but it just brings back a lot of good, good memories. On the screen, there is one verse of uh, Psalm 115, and if you would like to, uh, we would share this together as we open our worship. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. Let us uh, stand if you are able. And uh, the hymn number actually is 140. It's within 30 uh, pages. So, and it, it's on the screen. Great is thy faithfulness.
now uh, we should greet any, uh, everyone in the name of our Lord. Peace be with you and also with you. Let's see. I, one of the things that is uh, a challenge for me is, and, and I have to do this at both churches at, at Park Avenue, is turn my microphone on and off. Because if I want to whisk or something that you shouldn't hear, and I have this on, then I'm going to have to explain myself. Okay? <laughs> Joys and concerns. And I know that there's a joy right out uh, up in the front of the congregation. Probably, you probably have told everybody already. Actually, just one or two. Um, okay. Praises that we went down to Richmond safely and came back safely. And then a special praise, uh, my daughter-in-law, Brooke, Ted's wife, wanted all the family to get together. She had something to tell us. And so there's going to be a new member of the Inch family in April. Yay! Yay. <laughs> and pray, um, please pray for her because she is a diabetic, so you know she's going to go through challenges. And one member of our family couldn't be there for our little news because he has COVID, and that's Charlie. So um, he's he was vaccinated several months ago, and. Um, He's recuperating at home under doctor's supervision. So pray for him too. Any others? Roy and Corey, uh, they are on ventilators with COVID in the hospital. And the, the first name Roy. is Roy and uh, Corey. And Corey.
And I, I've been told that if there are persons that are viewing, this way we get the, uh, the prayer request out to them that they could, they could hear that. And also the health workers, keep them in your prayer. Okay. The health workers and first responders. Yes. Um, health workers, well. first responders. We still have uh, a lot of activity in the COVID uh, world in which in which we live. Uh, let us uh, have just three uh, page or three eighty two. Have thine own way, Lord. Verse just the first one, but that also is on the screen. Okay. <laughs> Continue to pour out upon us no matter what circumstances we might be experiencing in the good times and uh, the challenging times of life uh, we are thankful that you promise us that we will never be alone that you will be with us uh, and that you would help and guide us and continue to love us no matter uh, no matter what the circumstances we thank you Lord we thank you Lord uh, for this church uh, we thank you for uh, all churches where people come uh, together in your name uh, to be able to lift up and, and sing praises to you. Lord, we know that uh, there are a lot of joys uh, that we, we celebrate and, and certainly Hope's uh, announcement here that she will be uh, a grandmother uh, again. And uh, we're just uh, thankful for that, but we also know that uh, Brooke has some uh, health uh, challenges with uh, pregnancy, and we just pray that all would certainly go, uh, go well, and we just uh, give you, you the praise uh, in, in all of that. At the same time, we know that uh, Hope's son, Charlie, has uh, COVID and he's dealing with the uh, symptoms of, of that. Thankful that he had his vaccination, but still, uh, he still has to uh, heal and, and recover. Uh, also, Roy and Corey uh, also are dealing with COVID-19. We pray for healing uh, for them. We pray for Petra, who is a, a grandmother-in-law, uh, uh, who just had recent gallbladder surgery, and pray that as the tests come back that uh, there would be uh, no uh, further health uh, issues uh, that she might deal with. So we just pray for, for her. We pray for... Uh, health workers, uh, first responders everywhere who have just been overwhelmed uh, with, the, uh, with the amount of, of need in hospitals and certainly in EMT calls uh, since 
this COVID, which is now stretching towards two, two years now. So we continue to pray for a, a time when, when uh, this uh, COVID pandemic will, will come to a, an end. Um, we pray, Lord, for people uh, throughout the world, not only who have been dealing with COVID, but many who are dealing with uh, very difficult circumstances caused by uh, hurricanes, tornadoes, uh, flooding issues, and it just seems to be more prevalent no matter what part of the world we're, we're talking about. So, Lord, we know that there's a lot of people who have been displaced from their homes, that have been a lot, there have been a lot of property damage and loss of lives and injury. Uh, so we just pray, Lord, that your hand uh, will be with them, uh, each and every one, that uh, you would help guide them and, and bring them to a place of, of peace and, uh, and, and a time of uh, rebuilding of their lives. Lord, uh, we pray for all persons in authority, uh, those who are uh, in positions of leadership. Uh, this is not, uh, it is not easy and it is very difficult times in which in which we live and we just pray for your guidance and that we would take uh, time and listen to what you are saying to each and every person um, thank you Lord and now we ask that uh, uh, as we would share together this prayer uh, that the Lord uh, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. I know that uh, not too long ago, we used to uh, pass offering paint plates among the pews, and we, we do that a little bit differently now. Uh, we have baskets in the sanctuary, uh, typically at uh, different uh, doors, and uh, we are thankful to have the opportunity to give back to our Lord because we know that everything we have truly is His, and we are uh, hopefully utilizing what he has given us for his glory, uh, for his purposes. So we are thankful to be able to give back for sharing the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. So those who are not able to be with us, uh, we are thankful for your gifts that you may continue to send uh, those uh, donations to continue to support our local churches and their ministry. Thank you, in the name of Jesus. Okay. On your bulletin, we, did, uh, we don't have uh, Psalm 46, but I would, uh, that's an important part of the message that I want to share with you, you this morning. And it will be uh, on, on the screen. 
And I was going to do this perhaps with a, a, a responsive reading, but I want you to just, the fact that you can see the words uh, on the screen, am I in the, in the way of any of the words? No? Nope. Good. Good. See, I'm not always in the way. <laughs> huh? You might be in the way of the people online. Of who? The people that are online. Oh, online. How about, how about now? Okay. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Hear the word of our Lord through Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, and she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. And he says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm, I have another scripture passage. Uh, and But before I share that, I, I want us to focus on Psalm 46. Is that relevant, uh, relevant today? The words that we shared here this morning, that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. Do we, do we have trouble in the world today? <laughs> oh yes, uh, lots. And nations are in uproar. Did you, did you catch that part of it? Is that true? Has it ever been so truer in our lifetimes? But then, towards the end of this psalm, there's verse 10. It, it, it's very close to the end. And it's God speaking to us. Be still and know that I am God. Have you ever experienced that? Do we need to experience that more in our lives? I want us to think back 20 years ago. Now, some of you are not 20 years old yet, but I think you would have been told by parents and grandparents about 9-11 in the year 2001. We, just about a month ago, almost exactly a month ago, we remembered what happened 20 years ago on that date, 9-11 of 2001. What did you do? I know that everybody will remember where you were, what you were doing. 
But I want us to focus on what was your initial reaction when you realized what was happening? An attack not on just the United States of America, it impacted the world. There were persons who lost their lives from different areas of the world, countries, nations, uh, in, in the number of a, uh, approximately 80. So it uh, touched a lot of people. And approximately 3,000 people died. What did you do? What were your thoughts initially? Were you still and know that God was still in charge? What happened in our communities, our workplaces, our schools, our churches, as everything came together, as we understood who did this? Who masterminded this plot? And what happened to people in the weeks and months in the early time frame after 9-11? And actually, it has still been a bond, a purposeful, meaningful uh, way of being unified of people throughout the world. We came together. Churches got fuller. And over time, that tended to, to dissipate. Yeah. So now I want us to forward, fast forward, to COVID-19 and that began about 20 months ago. March, it, we be, it became uh, known and prevalent that about 20 months ago that this was real and it touched relatively all persons. Some areas not as much but over time, it has touched the world. So, initially, as we have been, and everything, almost, almost everything, had a little bit of time to close up shop. And people were in their homes until we could figure this out. And we... Uh, what did you do? What was your initial reaction? What was the initial reaction within schools and churches and, and uh, communities, uh, neighborhoods, workplaces? We just didn't know what, and we were feeling our way through this. And this is a... <coughs> calamity a, 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 that has <coughs> resulted in the United States over 700 deaths and counting and in the world 4,800,000 deaths and counting. So it has been catastrophic. Now, what is the reaction? Now, and, and I'm hopeful that as we know Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives, that we had time to be still. We had lots of time to be still. Because all of a sudden, our regular routines were interrupted. And places were closed. If it was non-essential businesses, and they were... They were closed. 
But over time, and we begin to have discussions, and, and there was differing opinions about uh, masking and closing. But what is a non-essential uh, essential business? Non-essential. Uh, not everybody agreed, uh, and we could we could go on and on, and as vaccinations became available, but they were approved initially uh, as an emergency approval, and they were still getting a full approval, which took months. And there were certain persons, and, and a lot of people, that had questions about that. And perhaps we were together for a little bit, but now, today, what is the, the, uh, the atmosphere within our communities, in our schools, in our businesses, our workplaces, our churches? We don't agree, do we? Many of us, we're a divided people. Uh, we have uh, been maybe a part or witnessed uh, angry people that might have been the uh, recipient of, of harsh words, maybe at school board meetings, maybe at church meetings. I would have hoped that that wouldn't have uh, occurred at church meetings, but you know, we're all... <laughs> We're all in need of uh, God's grace. All are sinners. So, what is the answer in bringing people back together? Well, um, I think last Sunday we had a good beginning as we went back to uh, first John, which also the Gospel of John, you know, God loves us. God's Word is filled with His love. So much that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in Him shall never perish but have eternal life. Love. So God loves us so much that we ought to love one another. Sometimes in the heat of battle or at the moment, there are times that we perhaps think or say or maybe do things that are not so loving. So in Colossians, uh, chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. Uh, let's hear and see these words from uh, the Apostle Paul. It, it's a great recipe for godly living. Uh, listen, listen to these words. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, 
Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and Father through Him. There's five of the fruit of the Spirit mentioned in those couple of verses. And the fruit of the Spirit is from Galatians chapter 5. And that begins with love. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and this is the one we don't want to maybe remember. Self-control. Self-control. Now that was not mentioned in this, uh, in this passage. But it is important that we be reminded uh, to love and be exhibiting, living with the fruit of the Spirit. That is the indication that, that God's love is living fully within us. Now the second part of, of the answer in, in trying to bring uh, healing and reconciliation in this COVID time in which we're living is testing for ourselves information that we've been given or maybe we have searched for. And that might help understand where people are coming from in different areas. So I'd like to uh, have us here. And Rod, you probably might have this one too. First Thessalonians. <laughs> wow. This is great. I didn't expect this. But you can see or hear uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning with the 16th verse. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies from with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good and reject every kind of evil. That is a, a good reminder, good advice, encouragement for all of us. I want to, to focus on that do not quench the spirit. There are times in our life that we not allow the Holy Spirit to be fully within us. Do not quench the Spirit. Don't extinguish the Spirit, but invite the Spirit to be an important part of our lives. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Uh, prophets are messengers bringing a message to the people from God thus saith the Lord is the prophetic message listen but test them all test everything in, in other uh, translations uh, test everything. Hold on to what is good and reject any kind of evil. Hold on to what is good. God is good all the time. All the time God is good. What is according to God is good. But evil is not 
of God. So that is how we discern what to hold on to. But we must test things for ourselves. I remember in my seminary uh, years, uh, and there were a lot of requirements, reading requirements, in my theology classes. And theology is, ology is a study of, and what's a the theo, theology, theo is Greek for God, study of God. So in theology classes, uh, I just wondered why these professors required reading different theologians, uh, their thoughts, uh, their different, uh, uh, on different theories in how they understood certain parts of theology. And it just seemed like a lot of reading. Why don't you just give us the answer? In other words, instead of having me read maybe five different uh, events or, or opinions, and when I say opinions, these are persons who have dedicated their lives in study of God's Word. So they dig very deeply. But you know what? That helps us. That helped me in my understanding and chose which I aligned with, which theologian in certain areas of, of theology. We need to test it for ourselves. So, now I want you to think in terms of what's happening with COVID, and there's, there's been a lot of conflicting information. It's, it, and so, one thing can't be true, and another can be true that totally is conflicting. So we have to test the validity, accuracy. Where is the source? Social media? What newscast? I mean, we have talked about, we never thought about this as much until today. This world of COVID in which we live. Conspiracies. I don't know that I ever used that word, or very rarely today. Um, what is true? A couple of months ago, um, not long ago though, I had a call from an acquaintance that I hadn't heard from. It was a couple uh, for a long time. I mean, they it, it's been years. And I was a little bit shocked uh, that this lady called, but she also called for her, uh, her husband and asked me this question. Uh, did you get vac vaccinated? And I said, yes, my wife and I, we, we did. And, but they, she went on and said, boy, she said, we have... They, they had been working at home, at home. They have, for over a year now, they have not been uh, anywhere. And they believe that the vaccination would have been very harmful. And matter of fact, she even said, she said, you know, she said, it's the mark of the beast from Revelation if you receive the... And, and I said, well, you know, and I brought her to this passage, test it for ourselves. In other words, is it accurate? Is it of the, the Lord? Is, is it good? Or is it uh, an opinion that perhaps we would have to question the accuracy, the validity of that? 
Sometimes we need uh, to connect with someone who uh, has been there or maybe had to do the same process. I, I think of, of the social media and the TikTok with our young people, the teens today. Uh, there's this uh, uh, phase that there are uh, young people that have been encouraged to go into public bathrooms and trash them. As, and it seems like, well, that's ridiculous. Do you know, locally, we have had those situations occur. We need to seek others' advice. A couple, I'm, I'm, I'm watching the clock here. I'm, I'm uh, we're a little bit beyond. But I want to share a story, um, and it's short. A couple, when I was in seminary, I uh, went to, I was headed to Littlestown, Adams County, to preach at my home church. And I had to do this in the middle of the winter because that was a semester break. So it was in early January, and I got up early. The rest of my family were headed to their churches. Uh, and when the garage door went up, I was just shocked because there was five, six inches of snow. But I had made a commitment, and I headed to... Uh, Littlestown from Carlisle area. I went at, I, I went through uh, Mount Holly Springs. There's a sheets there, and I wanted to at least have coffee that I can uh, keep alert and awake. But I was shocked. I had not seen one plow truck. The roads were a mess, and I was praying what to do. It just didn't look like this was going to be a safe trip. In essence, uh, finally, a truck came from the, the road uh, that, that I was headed to. And as he got out of the truck, that was the only uh, vehicle that I saw from that direction. And I asked him, sir, I said, I'm headed that way. Uh, I have to preach. And, and I gave him the, the name of the church, and I said, I'm a guest pastor there. Do you think I can get through safely? And I'll never forget what he, what he told me. He called me reverend. I never said that, but I was a reverend, but he knew I was going to preach. He said, well, reverend, God gave you a brain. Use it. Go home. And that's about the way, that's about the way that he, he said it. He was there. He knew the conditions. It's important that we seek someone who would know the conditions or what we were talking about. Not to us, O oh Lord, not to us, but to thy name be the glory. God needs to be at the center of what we're thinking, what we're, what we're doing in life. And you know, we're all unique, different characters. We are. We like certain things. We don't like certain, certain things. We, we all tend to have some self-serving tendencies. It's, I want it this way. Well, we need to be able to, to get together. We can't have it exactly the way that, that we want it. 
That last verse in Colossians, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do it as to the Lord and give thanks to God the Father through him. Is it to the Lord? Let us pray. Father God, I pray that as we go through these tumultuous, very challenging times, uh, that you would guide us. That we would test a lot of this information that we have at, the, at our fingertips. That is it valid? Is it true? And what is it that you would do through us? In the name of Jesus, amen. Our final hymn, uh, Open My Eyes That I May See. And those, if you would stand, please. <clears throat> in peace and love.